Hello, replay viewers. It's been a very long day. You saw me in Gloucester this morning. And here I am at the uh, opposite end. I have uh, still have a little ways to go. But at least I'm out of the, uh, getting out of the ocean right here. And hopefully my speed will pick up. And I don't know if I have any viewers, so I'm gonna have to start this over again. Oh, no, there's somebody. Hi, Clint. I didn't know if my notifications were working. I'm just at the mouth of the Cape Cod Canal. It's been a super long day. I left uh, before 7 and I still have over an hour to go. This thing is a, a fog signal as well as a light. Yeah, good evening. And uh, you might not be able to hear it. It's not very loud. So you have to time your, your passage through the canal so the current's in your favor. And I'm about to find out if I've done a good job. I think it should be picking up in a few moments. Um, I'm kind of hugging. Hugging. Oh, whoa, a little bit of current there. Right in front of us is a power station. There's the foghorn. It's not pointing out to sea, it's pointing into the canal. I'm hugging this jetty because something is coming in the, the other direction. I'm not sure what it is yet. A, uh, <laughs> not exactly a ship went out, but something large went out. The Coast Guard buoy tender went in. And there's something else that's, that's coming along very slowly. And I'm going slowly. I'm hoping I'm going to pick up some current. This is a fun, a fun little area of transition. Um, it's also possible that, that I've made a miscalculation. Um, but once I get once I get past the uh, this section, up just around the corner, then the current will start streamlining. Right here, it's a bit swirly. There's not much to see over on this side. It's kind of breezy, so I have my uh, I have my glass my glass zip zipped up. I opened up the other one so you can see the, the view, such as it is. Let's see what's coming. Up. I've had some waves today, so <clears throat> you probably don't see as much as I do. But the, uh, there's a lot of salt on this on this plastic. I'm trying to see what's coming. Can't yet. I'm supposed to keep to the right. So that's a good sign over there. There's a green buoy that's leaning over in, in, in a favorable direction. All right, here we go. So I normally was go. I normally go at six and a half knots. Uh, I was going into the wind and the waves for a while, so I was doing doing six, maybe a little bit less. And now I'm up to seven and a half. So so this is nice. And you can see that that the sun is getting low. And I would like to arrive before it's dark. It's easy to arrive. And you can see where you're going. Uh, so this, I was planning on this current squirting, squirting me along. Um, it's just like it's doing its job. I'm starting to pick up speed. I'm very tired. It's going to be so nice to uh, to anchor, put the engine off, and I, I can't have dinner until I'm stopped. I have to. Uh, <laughs> The, the autopilot doesn't do too well in here necessarily. There's a lot of uh, of strange eddies with the current, and it might swing the boat a little bit off course, and then you're too too close to something. So speaking of eddies, you can maybe see a giant one right here. Eventually, this current will will stabilize and, and all go in one direction. But at this point, it's kind of pouring in from the ocean and uh, it's kind of working its way around in different directions. So you can see all this disturbed water. And when that grabs your boat, you get swung around. But also, I was going seven and a half knots a moment ago, now I'm going eight and a half. So this is all, this is all very pleasant. It's always nice to end the day with a, a bit of help. Fortunately I, get, fortunately, I get this place uh, while well, it's still visible, so I can show you a little bit. I scoped going through here once or twice before, but you never know who's going to, uh, who's going to catch these. 
So both sides of this canal are, are kind of bicycling, walking trails once we get past this, uh, this boat basin. Over here is, is that side of the walking trail. And there's a sign that says there's a speed limit. Um, it's kind of a strange speed limit because they don't take into account the current. And so the idea is you don't want to cause too much erosion of the, uh, of the sides of the canal, even though it's mostly locked. And you can see over here, there's a sandy place uh, sharks have not crashed into my boat. I, I have seen sharks. Uh, I've come up on them very, very closely, and they've been sleeping in the sun. And, and they didn't know I was there until the last moment. And then they, they took fright, and there was a, I wasn't even. I mean, I'm, I'm not paying attention to sharks. And then there was a splash, and there goes the shark, Bamus. But those were uh, whoa. See now, see that? I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. Whoa, hang on. I'm sweet. Hey Graham, you, you jump ship. I'm trying to turn right and this current has me turning left. There we go. This is an exciting place. This is why you can't use the autopilot necessarily. So there was this uh, this vessel I saw coming on the electronic in, uh, chart. And it's a fishing boat. Nothing, nothing big. Well, you get to experience your boat vicariously. So over here, when they, when they dug out this canal, they had to put a place where you could wait at the end. At each end, they needed a waiting, a waiting, a waiting area. So they dug out this, this boat basin. And since that was done years and years ago, it's all become uh, docks and, and places for fishing boats. Oh my goodness, I'm working hard steering here. <laughs> You really can't see how bad the current is. Three years, well what's taking so long? Why is it laid up? I don't know if you ever told me the details. Three years is too long. My friend's boat was laid up for about three years. <clears throat> it was a wooden boat that needed, needed more repairs than they thought. And then the guy took a long time. But they're finally, finally using it. 23 foot fiberglass fishing boat. Well, that should be easy enough to get going. Can't be too hard, right? So that was the boat basin. And coming up is the power station. Uh, full hull up. Well, that's, that's why it's been three years. So this power station is only used in the summer when it's really hot and everyone's running their air conditioner. I don't know if it even actually was, even was turned on this year because all the tourists that, that come to Cape Cod uh, <laughs> didn't for obvious reasons. So the power station runs on oil and barges can come in over here and tie up and wait for their chance to drop off oil or just wait for, uh, you know, this is a good spot to stop. What is eight knots of miles per hour? Add 15%, just like you're tipping at a restaurant. So that would be close to 10 miles an hour. And I'm doing eight knots. I've, I've gone over 10 in here. Um, right now, it's not a full moon or a new moon, so the currents aren't, aren't very extreme. Oh, well, well, Graham, you, uh, you must be very good at, at working on boats. That's a huge project. I'm kind of cutting a little too close to this corner. The, uh, they built this canal. This canal's not straight. They built it with a few turns in it. So, uh, so you don't get a chance for, for giant waves to build up when there's a storm. They, they, they hit the corner and stop. At least that's my, at least that's my theory. There's the power station. Up some oil oil tanks. Oh, there you go. Well, you'll you'll be enjoy. Well, you'll be enjoying it next year, Graham. Yep. Good. Are you gonna Are you gonna do some scopes from your boat? Where's the temperature? The temperature is. I need shoes and jacket on. It's probably. Good, uh, good, good day. It's probably uh, 60 degrees. 
but the killer is this, this wind. So right now I'm going eight and a half knots. I've picked up speed. I'll probably pick up a little bit more, and then that might be it for a while. Oh, by the way, is, is my sound good? I think the last two scopes I did, I had the microphone unplugged, and the engine noise was, was very loud. So I made, the, made sure to push the plug in. I hope it's I hope it's pretty good audio. I have the microphone on underneath my jacket. Yep, well, a working boat, all you, that's all you need. So there's the oil tanks for the power station, and some of them, well, that all of them have uh, have containment, containment uh, walls, so if the tank has a leak, the oil doesn't go into the canal. It's smart. I'm slightly neg neglecting my navigational duties. It's, uh, it looks a lot brighter for, for you than it does for me, because I'm peering through the salt, the salt spray, and it is starting to get, get dark. I kind of wish the clouds hadn't come in. So over here, I'm going to try the autopilot. Oh. Over here on the right, it's a visitor center. I mean, uh, kind of a place you can fish, a fishing, fishing pier. And we'll just hang out, come and look at whatever's going by. There's not too many ships or whatnot that come through. But there's a whole lot of uh, trawler style, good. There's a whole lot of uh, small boats that come through here all the time. But it's so late in the year that, in, you know, especially the time of day, this is, this is not a... Thank goodness, I don't like it when there's a lot of boats whizzing through. Too much commotion. The waves start to bounce around. They bounce off the, the walls of this canal. All right, I better change my course. Too much to the left. If a, if a patrol boat comes along, I get in trouble for being on the wrong side sometimes. This is a this boat is a Pacific Seacraft 34, so it's a very strong boat. See all that salt? So now I can I have the autopilot on. Now we can look back. Here's a uh, most of a most of a monitor wind vane. What I don't have connected is the air the air vane part. But that will steer the boat without electricity. I think I have these ropes hooked up correctly. That's part of the, the self steering. Right now the electric autopilot's on because the motor's running. And I haven't figured that wind vane out yet. I was going to do that this summer, and I was almost ready to test it. And then my uh, my trip was ended a bit quickly. Uh, so I'm not sure I'll have a chance to test it. Well, don't don't sail drunk. That's not good. If if you if you sail, you know, they say if you sail drunk, that's how you have an accident. Oh my goodness, there's so many drunk boaters out here in the summer. It's, 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 you know, you don't want to be on the water at 4 o'clock when everyone's coming in. You kind of wonder how they, how they manage. So I'm looking ahead. I'm gonna, shh, don't tell anybody. Look back, look forward, no patrol boat. I see, oh my goodness. I'm going to try to cut this corner a little bit because the quickest distance is a straight line. Um, but I, I'll kind of hang out in the middle. I don't want to get... Sometimes, you know, oh, nine and a half knots. Hooray, I, I'm so happy. Three knots of current. Usually at six and a half knots is my normal speed. I'm doing that right now. This is why you don't ever want to try to go the wrong way in this canal if you only have a, a slow sailboat. <laughs> because, because you won't make it. You're the first mate. Oh my goodness, was this a paid, a paid position? Um, I have gone the wrong way in this canal. Very, very close to the shore where the current wasn't quite as bad. And there's also a time limit. They, they don't want you taking too long in here. And you can't sail through. You have to motor through. There's all these canal regulations. Now, at night, along both sides, you can see, uh, here you can see, is uh, every 500 feet or so there's a, a, a light so they'll come on and they light up the edge of the canal so you know where kind of know where you're at it's a little strange having this place pretty much to myself and it's and it's not freezing cold it's kind of a nice day oh 
Oh, I'll be so happy to get out of this wind. Uh, no one told me, is my, is my audio okay? Because I think I had my microphone unplugged this morning. Okay, go back to Donnie. Tell, tell Donnie he has competition. But Donnie's so much better. I can just show you some interesting things. I'm going to have to... Uh, oh, thank you for the auto re auto audio, audio recording. Either my microphone wasn't plugged in all the way or I had to plug it in at all this morning. And people were complaining. And I didn't <laughs> realize what happened. So I'm, I'm sure you decide the view to the right and I'm actually looking ahead because there's somebody coming. A little motorboat. And my GPS says I have five, no, almost six miles to go. There's a few turns. So I have about six miles to go. And it will take me, uh, oh, I don't like that maybe. So it's going to take me 50 minutes. But that's because I'm not pointing in the right direction. So there's, there's two highway bridges that connect the mainland to the to Cape Cod. And here's one of them. And in the, when, whenever it's nice to go visit Cape Cod, especially toward the weekend, these bridges get, get backed up tremendously with traffic jams. There goes, there's someone going fast. I bet they're going back to that marina we passed uh, a mile back. I'm going to probably, uh, have to be careful, I probably might need to put my running lights on. <clears throat> Sunset is 6.35. So that's when I legally need to have my lights on. So here's a little bit of wave action. You know, if it's a busy, a busy day, you get all, all these boats and the waves bounce around, they bounce off, each, off the sides of the canal, and it's a mess. So it's kind of nice when it's not busy. I've never, uh, I've never visited land. I've only passed through here by boat, and I've also driven over this bridge a few times to go look at boats. I've never been well, back there where that marina was. I stayed at that marina once and bicycled around a little bit. But other than that, I don't know what this place is like. It's just it has, has a lot of activity on nice days with people bicycling and rollerblading and pushing strollers. So here we're coming up to one of the first turns. And here's one of my reefing lines. Always Always dangling in the wrong, wrong place. Yes, we're going a lot of the way. Here's the bridge, uh, and it's gotten dark enough. All all bridges have uh, a green light in the center and red lights on the side, so you know where the uh, where to go through. Now, when I say center, I mean the center of the channel, not the center. It doesn't have to be the center of the bridge. One, two, three, four, five. On the autopilot, turning left a little bit. Anybody coming? No, nobody's coming. Okay. Nine and a half knots. One and five degrees. So what I really want to do is cut off to the left and save a little distance. So I'm, I'm going to be arriving after sunset, even if I'm, even though I'm going this fast. It still takes uh, 15 minutes to go in. And I'm going to be going against the current going in. Which isn't too bad. But it's so nice to end the day at, at a high rate of speed for about an hour. I left this morning at quarter of seven. So it's going to be about a 12 hour day underway. I didn't have any uh, I didn't have any delay. I got through. There's one bridge in Gloucester that had to open, and it opened right right as I wanted it to. There's a bridge in whatever, where I left from, and it opened when I wanted it to. And there's a second bridge in Gloucester which normally would open, but they're rebuilding it, so so the part that opens isn't there anymore, which is kind of a bummer. One, two, three, four, five. 
Maybe you can see some of the swirls in the, in the current. I think I'm going to scope out after this corner. I only have three people likely. And I need to put my running lights on. So we'll go for another five minutes or so. This is a much nicer view when people are outside using the trails and the sun is shining. But at least I got a chance to uh, show it to you. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yep, you're, you're welcome. I'm glad I have a good signal here. I came through here a few years ago with a friend on, on a friend's boat. And I was able to scope for his boat, so I knew there was a, a good signal. It's much easier when, when someone else is doing the driving. Having to navigate in here, <clears throat> operate the boat, and try to scope and watch the screen. It's a little, a, a little much. All right, another, another five. And I can check my, my electronic display and see, and see, I can scroll a little bit and see nobody's coming. Good. Here's the, uh, here's the fish finder. You can see the bottom, as I, as I, as I go along the bottom, you can see the bottom changes depth a little bit. And here's an electronic chart. So you see I'm in a, in a gentle left turn. Depth, the depth is, is 52 feet. Water temperature, surrounding up to 60. And battery voltage, 14.1. I like the fact that it shows the battery voltage. If, you, uh, if your alternator ever cuts out, it's nice to know that you can, you can see if it's doing a good job or not by looking at the, uh, with the fish finder. Anybody coming up from behind? No. All good. Speed 9.2. Slacked off just a bit. So I'm going to scope out at this parking lot. Put my lights on. Don't, don't remind me to remember to put them off. When, when I arrive, I have to put them off and put the anchor light on. And I'm so, I'm so ready for dinner. Yeah, well, my, my two scopes from today, this morning, were loud. I'm sorry about that. I haven't scoped for a while and my microphone wasn't, wasn't right. So, thanks everybody for, uh, for coming in for, for 20 minutes. And uh, we'll catch you next time. Have a good evening, everyone. Bye-bye.